You're not going to build a house without putting the foundation down first, right? Agreed. Well, the budgeting and figuring out your most important costs in retirement is the foundation for your retirement planning. And this is exactly what we're going to do today. So grab your retirement journal so that way we can jot down these top 10 costs that you have to keep in mind to make sure that your money is going to last you throughout your retirement time. The first point that we're going to talk about is the biggest cost that you most likely are going to have, and that is your housing expenses. If you own your home, you may still have some mortgage left. Maybe the goal is to go ahead and pay it off as soon as possible. And if you don't, you are still going to have expenses associated with having your home, like your property taxes, your utility costs, your homeowner association dues, things like that. And of course, if you are renting, that is going to be an ongoing expense of paying your landlord, which most likely is actually going to increase year after year, and it's never going to go away. So here are where I suggest you ask yourself these questions. Number one, could it make sense for me to go ahead and downsize? If you're going to have a smaller home, it's going to be less expensive. If you are thinking about your health in the next five to 10 to 15 years, maybe downsizing to a home that is just one floor is going to be less stressful and more manageable. Another option is thinking about relocating. There are other areas where the cost of living is less expensive or some other consideration that I typically hear from my clients, such as getting maybe relocating closer to family, closer to friends, or heading to a milder climate, maybe where your cold is, you're not tolerating the cold as best as you used to. And of course, all of you are going to have your own criteria when you're thinking about where you're going to retire. So jot those thoughts down and think about what are some of the pros and the cons when you're trying to figure out your housing situation and your housing expenses. Expense number two is going to be your healthcare. And it's something that is probably going to increase as you are going through your golden years. So I encourage you to take your time and to learn all of the ABCs of the Medicare and the supplemental programs. What are the premiums? What are the things that are going to be covered? And of course, the most important thing is that the items that are not going to be covered. Is there potentially an opportunity to have additional supplemental insurance maybe from your current employer? And is that insurance going to stay with you after you retire? And this is where I suggest to you that you may want to speak with a professional. There are, there are professionals out there who specialize in Medicare as well as supplemental insurance. And it's just something that to me, it's like this big uh, tunnel that you're going down because there's so much information. Sometimes you're not sure where to turn. So consulting with a professional that specializes in Medicare and supplemental coverage, a lot of the times is a good idea. I do have some suggestions on these professionals, which I'm going to link in the box under this video. And also I want you to really think, sit down and jot some thoughts down because you know yourself best you know where your health is going to be and where it's heading. So yes, it's time to ask yourself some hard questions on some of the things and maybe preparing now, because what I can tell you for sure is that putting some things and systems in place now is going to be a lot easier than for you to do it down the road where your health may be deteriorated and you're going to need some help. Point number three has to do with your daily living. I don't want you to forget about that. Of course, it's groceries, uh, things like um, uh, other activities, utilities. Uh, just remember that that's always going to be there and the costs are going to fluctuate month to month. So this is where it's important for you to be flexible and make sure you understand that those are not going to be fixed. Point number four has to do with entertainment. It's a very important part of your cost budget and something that is important to have. Um, now, I'm sure you, you know, if you're already retired, you probably feel like it's a weekend every day. So the idea is heading out and having some coffee with friends or meeting your family or going out and doing some things is important. But remember to put something in your budget for those things, because yes, all of those things do cost money. Point number five is taxes. There is no getting away from that, which means that being proactive and knowing exactly what to expect is going to be your best way to set up a good system. So I encourage you to speak with a tax professional to find out, depending on where you live, which state you live in, 
if it is going to make a difference whether your social security is going to be taxed or not, or maybe a portion of it. Uh, some states have graduated plans. If your pension, the private pension that you receive may be taxed as well. So think about also withdrawals from your retirement plans like your 401k, your Roth IRA, your traditional IRA, all of those things you need to consider because depending where you are in your tax bracket, it's also going to make a difference. So my recommendation to you is actually to speak to your tax professional twice a year. The first part is going to be, of course, when you're planning for your tax preparation in the beginning of the year. And the second time is when you want to meet around the middle of the year so that way you can plan for the rest of the year and also for the tax season ahead of time. That planning is what's going to give you a peace of mind knowing that you are prepared and you know exactly what to expect. Point number six is debt. Uh, think about the things that you have perhaps a leftover mortgage or a car payment or if you have a boat or something else. Focus on paying these things steadily off. If you can, put some extra money towards the principal because that's going to help you to pay it down faster. Also, don't forget about things that maybe you co-signed for. Maybe you have some credit card debt. Maybe you're helping out your kids or grandkids with student loans and some other obligation. And yes, this is where you may think about having a part-time job. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but just something as a supplemental additional income to help you, maybe temporarily if you want, to help tackle this debt and get that off your shoulders. Point number seven has to do with traveling and hobbies. It's one of my favorite things that I always kind of point out to you guys, and it's very important to have. Having something to do, having a passion, starting a business or exploring your hobbies is very important in your retirement. Um, do you have a bucket list? I actually did a really fun uh, YouTube live on building a meaningful bucket list that I'm going to link under this video. Go ahead and watch that. Um, I actually saw someone write a book about it and I thought it was a really cool idea with some guided questions to help you. Uh, think about your hobbies, uh, think about the things that you may want to do, but also remember with all of those things, yes, those things have financial consequences. It's going to take you money to travel and to purchase maybe supplies for the hobbies that you have, but think about the amazing time that you're going to have afterwards and the memories that you're going to build. So here I encourage you to explore possibilities of using your favorite credit card's perks. Make sure that you actually have perks with your credit card, like miles or cash back, so that way you can actually use those things to help you in this category. Point number eight is going to be home modifications and improvements. I put that as a separate category because it's that important. If you think about it, and that's how I invite you to think about, is that your home grows older and matures as much as you do. And that means that certain categories are going to have to be worked on. So think about major things in your home, like your siding, your roof, your windows. All of those things eventually are going to have to be replaced and those costs are significant and they grow year after year, just like inflation does. So think about the things that maybe you have already done in your home and some of the things that you still have to do because that absolutely has to be part of your budget. Also, if you plan on staying in your home during your golden years, you may have to make some modifications to make sure that your home is safe, which is a number one concern. So pot potentially bringing up and putting in the laundry on the first floor if you are having a hard time with the stairs, maybe moving your primary bedroom to the first floor because you're having or going to have a hard time climbing those stairs, making some modifications in the bathroom if you still have a tub and maybe the need will be to have the support and having a walk-in shower. I'm going to link a very useful tools for you is the age of all of the components of the home spreadsheet as well as a maintenance checklist for your home to help you put these systems in place and make sure that you are protecting your most important investment because for most of us, your home is something that you're going to be relying on for a big part of your retirement safety net. Point number nine is supporting your loved ones, like maybe friends, but most of the time it's family. So think about maybe co-signing for student loans with your kids, helping your grandkids with graduation, or maybe their prom or some of the other pursuits. And this is absolutely amazing thing that you can do, but I want you to stop and think for a second to make sure that you're not doing this at the detriment of 
not being able to retire or have enough retirement savings for your own golden years. One thought that I want you to keep in mind is the fact that your kids and grandkids could borrow money to buy a house or to get a car or maybe even to go on vacation, which I don't recommend. However, you yourself are not able to borrow the money to have a, a good and safe retirement. So just kind of food for thought, uh, just ha and also having great conversations with your family members to set up some boundaries and parameters is also very important to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Point number 10 is inflation. This is something that of course we can't control and what I invite you to do is just mean being mindful about it. Every year the cost of everything that we have increases. And this is where why you see the increase in your social security by a certain percentage. So the goal is to stay ahead of inflation. So if you have money Money, and I hope that you do in your savings as well as in your rainy day fund make sure that you put that in the high yield savings account that currently pays between four and five percent to make sure that your backup money your rainy day money is also still making money for you and I'm also going to link up some suggestions for you on some of the accounts that I have seen that are doing really good um, under this video as well and the bonus tip that I have for you today is this out of the 10 things that I mentioned nine which means 90% of these costs you absolutely can control and this is why it's so important to sit down have a budget or just have some idea right kind of like penciling some things in and writing them down you cannot control the inflation right which is the last item that I mentioned however budgeting and putting things down on paper in your journal is what it's going to help ease your anxiety and give you a good idea and a good strategy as where you are heading next. So the question I have for you today is what are some of the challenging questions that you had to pose to yourself that maybe you need answers for and we would love to help you with that strategizing and of course you asking these questions is also going to help others with planning their retirement.